In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Um, I will go back to making the um, Morning Minutes with the Fathers videos on Tuesdays. However, um, I do want to put this one out there for you. And that is the fact that today, for us on the new calendar, us new calendar Orthodox, the Greeks, the Antiochians, I think a lot of the OCAs, um, today is the third day of the Nativity Fast. This is the 40-day period in which we prepare our hearts, minds, and souls for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is kind of a tradition for most of us to use this time of the fast as a time of spiritual reading as well. So, I have two books in particular. First, Defeating Sin, Overcoming Our Passions, and Changing Forever by Father Joseph Honeycutt. Anybody familiar with the Orthodoxy podcast um, on ancient faith, um, you probably heard of Father Joseph. Great guy, and so far, this is a pretty good book, so maybe I might comment on that one day. Um, what I do want to comment on is the religion of the apostles, Orthodox Christianity in the first century by um, Stephen de Young, Father Stephen de Young. Had not met him, one day I would like to meet him. Um, Father de Young's book kind of like opened, reopened my eyes to, to something that's very important, especially for us who are using this time of the fast as a time of self-examination and self-reflection. Shouldn't we all be using our fasting periods for self-reflection and self-examination. I think so, but that's just me. At any rate, um, Father De Young, Father Stephen, mentions the fact that the book of Revelation is a book that really reveals who Jesus Christ is. It's not so much some esoteric end of the world sort of thing, but it's a letter to seven churches. And if you read about these seven churches, Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, you'll find that these seven churches are pretty much the same thing as what our churches go through today. And also, I would dare add that these seven churches represent us in our lives. One of the churches forgets its first love, its true love. How often do we do that? A couple of churches are going through extreme persecution and they need encouragement. How often do we go through that? The majority of the churches are doing some shady stuff. You know, <laughs> these, these churches are allowing false teachings and they're allowing um, sexual immorality. How many of us fall into such traps? And then there's this other church that's very, very complacent about its faith to a point where um, Christ says that because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth that I wish you were either hot or cold, but you're lukewarm. How many of us fall in to that trap? So if you don't buy either one of the books that I have, that I'm reading, you know, that that's cool because in orthodoxy, first of all, you have all of these books written by the church fathers. If you hadn't read some old stuff by the church fathers, stuff by um, Christosnum or the Desert Fathers, go ahead and do that one day. Make, make it a point to do that one day. Or if you haven't read something by like some of the more modern writers, even some of the great Russian um, Orthodox writers, um, I'm a big fan of Ignatius Brian Chaninoff, um, you know, and, and of course, 
you know, the modern writers such as Honeycutt, such as the Young, such as um, Father Andrew Stephen Damick. Um, yeah, the, the, these are all good books to read, but read the Bible. <laughs> it's almost embarrassing for me to actually say that. Yes, read the Bible. And in particular, I would recommend um, Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Look at what Jesus says to the seven churches. Look at where you are in relationship with those seven churches. See where you have... All right, John, let me look at myself. Let me look at those seven churches. Let me see where I've fallen short, where I need to be corrected. Not just where I need to be encouraged. Oh, we all love encouragement in the Bible. But every now and then we need to take a harsh look at ourselves and sometimes step on our own toes. Sometimes take ourselves to the woodshed. But to make the corrections, make the corrections in our spiritual journey. And perhaps that's what the book of Revelation is all about to encourage us to make the corrections in our spiritual journey because there is a great glory, a great glory for all who correct themselves and hold on to the true faith no matter what the persecution, no matter how evil the times seem to be, that the ultimate victory belongs to God. All right, that's my two cents. Everybody have a wonderful day. Again, those of us who are fasting, let us continue with the fast. Those of us who will be fasting, um, our old calendar brothers and sisters, look forward to it, look forward to it. And um, if you don't watch anything else, then please have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Be blessed.